Hey guys, I'm Abur and welcome back to World of Warships. Today we'll be looking at the Tier 9 American battleship, the Iowa. Now the Iowa comes immediately after the Tier 8 American battleship, the North Carolina. So I'll compare the Iowa to the North Carolina. This is the Iowa and the North Carolina. So you can see that they do look fairly similar. Now the Iowa is a little bit longer than the North Carolina. It's roughly the same ship as the North Carolina with some pretty good upgrades. Now there's one ship to compare this ship to, the Iowa, and that is the Tier 9 Japanese battleship, the Izumo. Now I haven't actually unlocked the Izumo yet, but I will flick to it in the tech tree and show you guys the differences as we go along. So let's get into the main stats of the Iowa. So the first stat is survivability, and this is a Tier 9 battleship. So you would expect it to have fantastic stats, and it definitely has that. So 97 out of 100 in survivability. There's only two ships in the game better than 97, and one ship that's on par, which is the Izumo Tier 9 Japanese battleship. Now this ship has, when it's fully upgraded, it has up to 79,000 health, which again is the third highest in the game. That's a fantastic amount. It can really take some punishment. And the ship also has fantastic armor as well. Now armor specifics have been taken away. I'm sure they'll add them again in the not too distant future. But I have the armor stats from previous versions of the game, and it's at 287 millimeters thick of armor. That's quite a lot better than the previous tier, the North Carolina, and a lot better than the Tier 9 Japanese battleship. Now, the Izumo um, has the same score as this. It has 97 out of 100. I'll show you what the Izumo looks like. The Izumo has up to 78,900 health when it's fully upgraded, but only up to 157 millimeters thick of armor. Now, the Iowa's armor is nearly twice as thick as the Izumo. The Izumo is much of a glass cannon. It has those three very powerful guns at the front, uh, no guns at the back, and it can die very, very easily. The Iowa, however, really can take some punishment. It's a good brawling ship. It has fantastic guns, fantastic armor. It has very good overall survivability. So the next stat of the Iowa is artillery firepower. And this ship, when fully upgraded, has a score of 67 out of 100. Now, that's not very good for a battleship. In fact, it's the same gun configuration as the previous tier. There are no gun upgrades for this ship. The same as the North Carolina with the upgrade, these guns go to a maximum distance of 23.3 kilometers. And that's a very, very long distance, but it's not very accurate at beyond 20 kilometers. So you will very rarely hit targets at in excess of 20 kilometers. We have three by three, 406 millimeter turrets. So we have two turrets at the front with three guns on each. That's six guns at the front and three at the back. This ship has secondary armament of 10x2 127mm guns, which act as both anti-ship and anti-plane guns. The rate of fire of the main guns on this ship are 2.0 rounds per minute, which is about average for a battleship. The turning time of these guns is 45 seconds for 180 degrees. The dispersion is quite bad at nearly 300 meters. The maximum damage for high explosive is 4,800. Um, versus the armor-piercing maximum damage of 13,500. So overall, these guns are very good. They go to a very good maximum distance, but the dispersion of these guns isn't very good. Now, the Izumo, in comparison, the Izumo has a score of 69 out of 100, so the Izumo does beat the Iowa in overall firepower. In terms of main guns, this ship has 3x3 3 3, 410 mm guns, all of the Izumo's guns at the front, so in that respect, the Iowa has the advantage, but the Izumo has a much better secondary armament firepower. Now it says here we have 6x2 127mm guns and 3x3 3 3, 155mm guns. Now that's without the upgrade. With the upgrade on the Izumo, we have a much better overall secondary armament than the Iowa. It has 12x2 127mm guns and 1x3 155mm guns. So in that respect, the Izumo is better. But the Izumo has the disadvantage in having no rear guns, whereas the Iowa has three guns at the back. And the next stat of the Iowa is the anti-air capability. And the Iowa has a score of 84 out of 100. Now that's one of the best in the game for anti-air capability. It can shoot down planes very, very fast. Now as you can see here, we have lots of low caliber guns, 20mm and 40mm. And we have those dual purpose guns, which are 127mm in caliber. That's versus the Izumo's 68 out of 100. The Americans tend to have a better anti-air capability anyway. The difference between the Iowa and the Izumo is very large. The Iowa is much better than the Izumo in terms of anti-air capability. The next stat of the Izumo is maneuverability, and this ship has 44 out of 100. That's very good for a battleship. It has a maximum speed of 31 knots. Now that is one of the fastest battleships in the game, if not the fastest battleship, 
31 knots is a very, very fast speed for a battleship. It has a turning circle radius of 920 meters though, it's a very long ship, um, and it does take some time to turn around fully. And the rudder shift time is 22.2 seconds, which is respectable for a ship this size. Now against the Izumo, the Izumo has a maximum speed of 28 knots, a turning circle radius of 890 meters, and a rudder shift time, which is exactly the same as the Iowa of 22.2 seconds. The overall maneuverability score of the Izumo is 34 out of 100, so in terms of maneuverability, the Iowa is better than the Izumo. The maximum speed of 31 is exceptionally high for a battleship in this game so far. It's a very good top speed. And the last stat of the Iowa is concealment, and that's 23 out of 100. We have a surface detectability range of 16.2 kilometers and an air detectability range of 14.2 kilometers. That seems to be very good for a ship of this size. Usually ships of around this displacement of this size have very poor concealment ratings. The Izumo, the tier nine Japanese battleship, has a concealment score of seven out of 100, a surface range of 19.3 kilometers and an air range of 15.7 kilometers. So Iowa is better than the Izumo in terms of concealment. So it seems based on the stat differences between the Iowa and the Izumo, that Iowa is much better. Now the Iowa has the same score in terms of survivability as the Izumo, um, but that's misleading. The Izumo has a very poor armor, whereas the Iowa nearly has double the armor of the Izumo and more health, albeit only 100, but still. In terms of artillery firepower, the Izumo beats the Iowa. The Izumo's guns are only limited to 21.7 kilometers, so the Iowa has a better distance, but the Izumo's guns are a higher caliber, and the Izumo has much better secondary armament. And the Iowa is much better in terms of anti-air capability, maneuverability, and concealment. American ships tend to be better in terms of anti-air capability anyway. The Iowa has a fantastic top speed of 31 knots, and the Iowa has a respectable concealment, which is 23 out of 100. So based on these stats, the Iowa is much better than the Izumo, but the Izumo is misleading. It is very much a glass cannon. It does have those very powerful guns, which can wreck ships very quickly. But overall, the Iowa is better. Okay, so let's look at the modules and credible upgrades of the Iowa. So the Iowa, as you can see here, there are no gun upgrades. You have one gunfire control system upgrade, which is as standard, no engine upgrade, and two hull upgrades. So as standard, the Iowa has a maximum health of 68,100. The first hull upgrade increases that by 10,900 and also increases anti-air capability by 11 and 32 gun mounts. So this is the first upgrade you can choose. And the second upgrade I would choose is the gunfire control system upgrade, which is an increase in range of 10% to a maximum range of 23.3 kilometers. And the last upgrade, which leads onto the Montana at tier 10, increases anti-air capability further, plus six, and decreases the rudder shift time by 8.9 seconds. It's a shame there are no gun upgrades for this ship. I feel having the same guns as the North Carolina at tier eight is a bit of a letdown, but overall these guns aren't that bad. In terms of the engine, the ship already goes to a maximum speed of 31 knots, which is fantastic. You definitely don't need an engine upgrade. So let's get to the credible upgrades of the Iowa. So the first one I've chosen is the main battery modification one, which is minus 20% to chance of magazine detonation, minus 20% to chance of critical damage to main batteries, and minus 20% to main battery repair time. Now I've chosen this one. We only have three turrets consisting of nine guns. Um, these turrets can be destroyed with high explosives. So I've chosen this one just to further increase the health of my turrets. Now the second upgrade I've chosen is the gunfire control system modification one, um, which increases main battery firing range plus 16%, so these guns go to a maximum range with the gunfire control system to 27 kilometers, which is one of the highest in the game. Now the third upgrade I haven't chosen just yet, we have a choice, I would definitely go for this one here though, which is the increased main battery firing accuracy. It does cost quite a lot at 1 million credits, but it increases the accuracy and the accuracy of these guns is very poor at standard at nearly 300 meters dispersion. So this is necessary if you have the credits to purchase it. The fourth upgrade I would choose is the damage control system modification one, which is minus 3% chance of flooding and minus 5% chance of fire. Now this is definitely needed in a battleship and a ship that turns very poorly. This ship goes at a turning circle radius of 920 meters and you do get hit by torpedoes and you can be set on fire by smaller ships. So I would definitely recommend this upgrade as well. 
The fourth upgrade I would choose is the minus 20% to rudder shift time. The Iowa does have a respectable rudder shift time of 22.2 seconds, but it has a very poor turning circle radius. So you want to use this upgrade to reduce your turning time. And the last upgrade I would choose, you have a choice of the concealment system modification one, which increases concealment stats, or this one here, which I've chosen, which is the target acquisition system modification one, which increases maximum acquisition range. Now these guns go to a very good distance of 27 kilometers and in some respects you can't actually spot the targets so i've chosen this one to further increase my spotting range so i can fire at those targets at very very long distances so there are the main stats and credible upgrades of the iowa so the iowa is a fantastic ship it can really take some punishment with that very good arm at nearly 300 millimeters thick very good health at nearly 80,000. pretty good guns that go to a very good distance of 27 kilometers with the upgrade very good anti-air capability, very few planes can withstand a few seconds above this ship. A fantastic maximum speed of 31 knots and a respectable concealment rating of 23 out of 100. This ship is a fantastic ship and is definitely worth your credits and experience. Now this ship is much better than the Izumo. The Izumo has some good stats, it has better main guns, it has better secondary armament guns. But the Iowa has the armor advantage, the speed advantage, the concealment advantage and the anti-air capability advantage. The Iowa is a much better ship than the tier 9 Japanese equivalent. So let's have a look at some gameplay in the Iowa. Okay, this is the Iowa on North Domination mode. So the Iowa is played very similar to the previous tier, the North Carolina. It has very long range guns uh, at 27 kilometers. So I would usually recommend in this ship just to stay back away from the conflict and fire at your maximum distance. Now 27 kilometers is one of the furthest firing ranges in the game at the moment. I think it's only outweighed by some of the tier 10 ships which can go to 28 kilometers. It's good to utilize that very long distance on guns to surprise your enemies by firing them at very very long distances in distances where they can't fire on you. So I'm starting out on this map by going towards the 1-2 line which I quite often do in um, battleships with very long distance guns. I did the same in the North Carolina. I hang back at round BC1 or 2 um, and fire at enemies until they go further away until my allies push up and then I push with the team and hopefully kill off some enemies. So the Mahans they're going to cap A. This is domination mode. This is not the replay system. This is just the regular um, capture. Fuso over there 24 kilometers going to fire a couple of shots high explosive with the initial salvo there's no point in me really reloading between the two um, without firing so i fired the first he salvo in they go 24 seconds for ap next time so the shots are still going in they look quite good it seems like the fuso has slowed down a little bit so they are uh, mostly missing but we hit him in the front of the deck there for 1500 and we set him on fire so now he's repairing um seven seconds for ap we have a couple more ships beginning to appear we have the iowa which is 24 kilometers away, which is a very big threat. He surely has the same maximum distance as I have if he's chosen the um, upgrade and the Ibuki. Now, the Ibuki is 17.8 kilometers. The Mahan has seen him. He's trying to surprise him with some torpedoes. Going to fire one salvo, but the Ibuki is going very fast. I sort of mistime my shot here. Um, and I fire a bit too preemptively, and then he goes invisible with the um, destroyer's smoke, so I have no, no idea where he is. Um, shots are going in, but we only hit him once um, for a no damaging penetration. So the eye was there at 24.2 kilometers. We have some allies helping with lots of planes. There's one carrier on my team versus two carriers on the enemy team. So carriers are a very big threat to the bigger ships in this match. Um, I'm trying to keep away from the conflict. If um, the enemy carriers see me, they will definitely target me first and I will be dead very quickly. I've had some games in the Iowa where I've been targeted immediately by the carriers and been killed within only a couple of minutes, which is a big shame really in the Iowa because when you, when you have a long game in the ship, you can do a substantial amount of damage and kill lots of ships. So the Iowa did take a lot of punishment there by the allied carrier. Um, the Fuso is there at 26 kilometers, but the maximum distance of these guns is only 27. And when you fire at 27 kilometers, um, it does get very, very inaccurate. So the Fuso is at 26. I've decided not to shoot at him just at the moment. See what other targets are available. The Iowa is at 28 kilometers. Of course, if the Iowa was closer, I would target him first. Um, he seems to be repairing the Fuso 25 kilometers. Um, the angle the Fuso's in, it's not the best angle to fire at a target. Uh, he's sort of diagonally onto me. He can very easily turn left or right. Fuso's a very fast ship, um, so you can very easily miss. So, so I'm going to fire one side at the Fuso anyway. It does look like he's almost stationary, 22 kilometers. Of course, I only have my two front turrets available. Um, I have one back turret as well, but I can't get that around to attack the target unless I go broadside on. 
So in terms of the game, we're actually winning in terms of kills, but we're, we're winning barely in terms of score as well. We capped one point, and we're capping another, and the enemy are capping two separate points. Um, it seems like the enemy carrier has, instead of targeting me and my allied battleships, they're targeting straight away to the allied carrier, which is a good tactic. If you take out the uh, enemy carrier as quickly as possible when you're in a carrier, you have a massive advantage in terms of air superiority. So the Ibuki is at 27 kilometers away. Uh, I have my shots ready, AP, uh, not high explosive. I would probably fire high explosive at the Ibuki at this distance, um, but I have to wait 30 seconds for that to reload. I'm gonna fire one salvo in. Um, it looks quite good, but it seems like he's sort of nosing forward and back. He's creeping in and out of that rock, in and out of cover, and I missed all that salvo. The Ibuki is there as well, the destroyer, and I would definitely not recommend firing at a destroyer in this ship with the very high dispersion, the very low accuracy with the Iowa's guns, at this distance. The lowest distance I would recommend firing at destroyer is 10 kilometers, I would say. Of course, it depends on what destroyer it is. If it's a fast destroyer, um, yeah, I'll probably go a bit, probably eight kilometers. So there's a Fusa there at 11 kilometers. The one I saw earlier, he's coming towards me, but he's face on, very hard target to hit. Hit in there with armor piercing, only hit him once and for a non-damaging penetration. So trying to get my back gun around. I'm turning very sharply right to get the back gun in range. Fired again, three shots in, critical damage, knocked out one of his guns, and we did very limited damage. So now he's coming side on to us. He hasn't got his guns faced on us at the moment, so we have the, we have the advantage here. Firing more shots, in they go. 2,700 damage. Not bad. He has some torpedoes, some allied torpedoes on his team heading towards him. He is trying to avoid them. That gives me the advantage. He's completely side on to me now, and the Iowa is fantastic on side-to-side -side brawls with other battleships. So firing another salvo in the center of the ship for 8,000 damage. My two front guns are available in five seconds. It seems like his allied ship, the Iowa, has been sunk. So fire my two front guns, in they go. I did do one citadel hit for 20,000 damage, but I didn't finish him off. If he was completely side on to me at that point and not slightly turned at an angle, it probably wouldn't have ricocheted. It probably would have done a killing blow. So last shot's going in, 1,700 health. Hit him there for 1,300. I'm at a big disadvantage here. I'm probably not going to get the kill. Four second reload on guns. I'm hoping my second dark armament will finish him off at this point. In they go. No damage penetrations. I was hoping the second dark armament would finish him off. I didn't find my main armament. And it seems like the allied Mahan got the kill. So the Mahan did fire some torpedoes there. He could have very easily got me if they were longer range torpedoes. Um, it's very risky play to... To use torpedoes when they're allied battleships. They can very easily maneuver into them or not see them coming and you can do a lot of team damage that way. So the Ibuki's there, I wanted to fire a shot but he was behind that rock, didn't get the time in to shoot that guy but the ally finished him off with torpedoes. There's a Cleveland there at 14 kilometers trying to get a good angle at this guy. Cleveland hasn't got the best arm in the world, I am firing armor piercing at this guy. Um, if it does penetrate it can do a substantial amount of damage. You see there it didn't fully penetrate I mean you got 1300. The Pentacola as well has it's a lot worse armor. It's a tier above the Cleveland. It has a lot worse armor. It has better guns and worse overall DPM. In my opinion, the Cleveland is a much better ship than the Pensacola. That fired at the Pensacola anyway, and I did miss. Now, this is a problem I've got in a position where I'm in between two cruisers, two fast cruisers with very high penetrating guns. Um, as soon as they focus on me, then I am in trouble. So the Cleveland's trying to maneuver to avoid the torpedoes. They are missing him, it seems, barely. They've gone out of range. He's now firing on me. He's only around 10 kilometers away. That's prime distance from these guns, but I need to get the accuracy right. I need to lead the shots correctly. He turned at the last second, though, and he only got 10,000 damage opposed to a kill. But 10,000 damage isn't too bad. The Pentacle is firing at me as well. I am the only ship in the water here. All my allies around me have been killed. Um, at this point in the match, we are... It's, it's a draw in terms of ships. Um, and we're winning in terms of score, but they are capping the bases very, very quickly. So the Pentacle is firing at me again with high explosive. And I, I don't blame them. High explosive is very good against battleships. High explosive can do a substantial amount of damage over time um, if you set the target on fire. So the Cleveland's there. He's sort of not very fast. at 9.9 kilometers. going to fire a shot not too far away from the front of his ship where he's sort of turning. Hopefully get a good shot here. We hit him there for 1,300, so a very low damage penetration there. The Pentacle is still firing at me, so I'm turning fully side on here, fully left, to try and get that back gun round to kill off the Cleveland, and then focus down the Pentacola. The Amagi is at 28 kilometers, so not a threat at the moment, and it does seem like he's being flanked by my allied Pentacola and my allied battleship as well. So the Cleveland is now side on to me, going to fire a full salvo into him, 7,600 health left, but he turned in such a way that all my shells missed, 
Um, I do have a torpedo bomber going overhead now, and they did fire two spreads of torpedoes, but it doesn't really matter what I do here. I can't really avoid them in the angle that they're coming, and I did get hit with a torpedo. So now I'm taking fire damage and flooding damage. The cleaver needs to die. Panticolor is still firing at me. There's two carries to my left and an enemy battleship. Shots going in, 2,700 damage, times by two, but now he's going behind that rock. I'm trying to turn left as quickly as possible to get my gun back round to finish this guy off, but he's going behind that rock and I can't finish him off in time. So now I either have to choose the Amagi, the Carrier, or the Pensacola. I'm still on fire and I'm still flooding. I've just hit the repair button, so now I'm no longer flooding or on fire. I can't actually heal the ship for another 25 seconds, so I have to make do for now. Try not to take as much damage as I can. Shoot the Pensacola. I have one dive bomber overhead. Not a big threat, but he can set me on fire. I hit the Pensacola there for nearly 9,000 damage, which isn't too bad. Um, reload in 17 seconds for my full broadside. We have two carriers here somewhere. I did see them a second ago. There are two dive bombers overhead. I do have my repair ready, but I'm going to wait until after the dive bomber has fired for me to repair. So then, of course, it repairs more as opposed to a base standard. So the Pentacle is now at 7,800 health left. Got to fire my full salvo into this guy. Shots going in. Very low damage roll there. Only 1,300 for a very low damaging hit. The cleaver behind me is now around 15 kilometers away. He's hiding behind that rock, so I can't fire him effectively. He is invisible. The Pensacola is only 6,000 health left, but I know he's probably not the best target to fire at, and the Essex is there with the carrier. So I'm thinking, what should I do here? Should I take out the carriers, or should I take out the Pensacola, which is the bigger threat? I have a torpedo coming in now. The Essex needs to die with the Shikaku. I'm in such a good position here. I need to take out both of those carriers as quickly as possible to make sure that my team wins. Now, these carriers are a big threat. I fired a full salvo for one Citadel hit and 20,000 damage. So now I'm thinking to ignore the Pensacola completely, just nuke down the Essex and Shikaku, and then win the game with my ally. So the allied carrier has some torpedo planes coming in to finish off the Essex they're coming in the Cleveland behind me has shot me as well I did get hit by a torpedo um, but the torpedo knocked out my engine and induced flooding I don't have repair for another minute the Essex did take some damage firing a full salvo into this guy 15,000 health left shots going in and we killed the Essex so the Shikaku's left he has lots of planes at his disposal the Pensacola is on my right at 11 kilometers but the Shikaku is stationary and a much better target to fire at the Cleveland is now in action again behind me on my right. I can't repair just yet. So he's firing at me with high explosive. The Pensacola is firing at me with high explosive. The Shikaku is at 8,000 health left, firing a full salvo at this guy. He's almost stationary, so not leading the shots anyway. 7,000 health left. Shots going in. One Citadel hit, and we finished them off. So that's two carrier kills within quick succession. That's really given my team a big boost in terms of um, score, in terms of who's going to win. 900 points on the scoreboard now versus around 500. We only have one cap point, but we're winning in terms of ship on ship combat. The Pensacola is at 12 kilometers away, 6,000 health left. We don't have repair for another 15 seconds. We are on fire. We have had some secondary armament destroyed. Gonna fire a full salvo into this Pensacola. He needs to die. 6,000 health left at 12 kilometers. Shots going in, and we finish him off for another Citadel hit. So that's three kills in quick succession, and now the Cleveland is next. So the Cleveland can't fire at me at this distance. He's at a big disadvantage, whereas I can fire at him. And the Cleveland's maximum distance is only around 16 kilometers, whereas mine is 27 kilometers. So I'm going to get a lot of payback for that early damage the Cleveland and the Pensacola did on me. So I already killed the Pensacola, and now the Cleveland is next. So 2,000 health left, firing a full salvo just in front of him. Usually I wouldn't recommend firing at cruisers at this distance, but he is facing towards me roughly. Shots going in, 2,000 health left. <sighs> A lot of damage, 1,300, only 800 health left. He is being targeted by the Allied Carrier and some other ships as well. We have one other ship on the enemy team. The guns are ready in two seconds. Going to fire a salvo. We can't repair the ship for another 1 minute 20 though. So if we take any damage from any ship, we will likely die. We only have 3,000 health left. So the Cleveland is very low. Shots going in. And we finished them off. So four kills within very quick succession. 52 hits in total, 4 Citadel hits, and we knocked out 7 planes. So there's only one ship left. We're winning by a very large margin at the moment. It's only the Miyoko left at 20 kilometers away. The Miyoko can't fire at us for a long margin, but if he does get within range somehow with his very good speed, then we are in a lot of trouble. So at this point, I'm keeping the nose away from the Miyoko, so he can't get within distance and he can't kill us before the end of the match. He's going to fire a couple of shots at the Miyoko at 20 kilometers, but the Miyoko can very easily turn left or right or reduce speed or increase speed to avoid shots at long distance. Um, so I'm not very hopeful here about the shots going in. Shots going in anyway, and we did miss by a very small margin. If they did hit, if he, if he didn't increase speed there, we would have very likely got the kill. 
but we have an allied cruiser and an allied battleship heading his way and the game is about to end in only 20 cap points so it's been a fantastic game in the Iowa um, initially it didn't look so good when I got caught between those two cruisers but I did get back and I did get those four kills within very quick succession and we did win the match. In terms of credits we got 405,000 credits, 4,900 experience, 245 free experience, we got 52 hits, 7 planes shot down, we got 1 critical hit, we got 4 destroyed, 1 set on fire and 4 citadel hits. Also got the fireproof achievement and the dreadnought achievement so very good overall. In terms of team experience, we came second with 2,190 base experience with 4 kills and 7 planes shot down. The Taiho won the match probably in terms of damage, it came on top by only a small margin. And in terms of damage, we got 123,000 damage with armor piercing, 1,500 with high explosive with the first initial salvo that we fired and set on fire with that target on the first salvo for 3,200. So this has been the USS Iowa, the tier 9 American battleship. The Iowa is a fantastic ship in this game, has amazing survivability, the third best in the game just after the tier 10 ships, very good artillery firepower in excess of 27 kilometers, fantastic anti-air capability, capable of shooting down almost any plane within a very short duration, and is one of the fastest bow ships in the game. I say this a lot about some ships being the best ship in the game or whatever, but this ship truly is one of the best ships in the game. The Iowa is a fantastic and formidable ship, and I can't recommend this ship enough. If you want a ship that's good at brawling, that's good at shooting at long distance, this is your ship. It can take damage, it can deal damage, it can shoot down planes within very quick succession. It truly is a fantastic ship. So I can't recommend this ship enough. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.